Okay, so thank you very much for having me uh, here. I'm sad I can't be with you in Singapore today, but happy to uh, present from uh, from Canada. So I don't have a lot of time. I will give you a quick overview of uh, policies in Canada towards net zero buildings. I will focus on national policies at the federal level. I will also highlight a few policies that uh, take place at uh, the sub-national level. So I will start with the general policy drivers that we have uh, guiding us in Canada. A few key federal initiatives, there's too many to name, um, but I will go through the main, the main ones and talk a little bit about some initiatives we're seeing at the provincial level and at the city level. I left my contact information at the end and I believe it's in our package. If, uh, if anyone has any questions, I'm happy, happy to talk about this. So let me talk first about uh, what's driving policy in Canada when it comes to buildings. The first thing is we have what's called the Emissions Reduction Plan, which was passed in March of last year in response to the government's Net Zero Emissions Accountability Act. So the government of Canada has committed to net zero by 2050, and in that, um, there's a requirement for regular plans um, related to climate initiatives, and of course, buildings are no, uh, no exception. We have a medium-term target of 40 to 45% of GHG emission reductions by 2030, below 2005, and uh, we have a lot of uh, policies uh, in, this particular, in this particular space to uh, in this particular, uh, in response to this plan. The second thing is we have what we call mandate commitments. So every minister in the federal government is given uh, specific mandates and there's quite a few related to buildings. And I just wanted to give you a sense of how pervasive or how broad it is in the context of the federal government here. Various ministers have commitments to accelerate net zero construction and deep retrofits, to develop net zero emissions codes in the next couple of years, to develop codes for existing buildings. There's a commit, clear commitment to transition away from fossil fuel home heating. There is a commitment to require labels at time of sale. There's clear commitment for greening government operations and a whole lot more. So we'll talk about some of these, but these are spread across various um, government ministries um, at the national level here. Lastly, we are currently developing what we're calling the Canada Green Building Strategy, which will be uh, essentially an, an umbrella strategy outlining new and, and ongoing initiatives to help decarbonize our building sector and will help chart a path forward. For us, it does mean, of course, talking about uh, heating, which is our big challenge in Canada. The majority of our emissions in this space come from heating, uh, but also talking about uh, resiliency, the retrofits and net zero construction from the start. So those are the main policy drivers uh, that have been taking place in the last few years. And now I want to talk about a few initiatives. Now, as I said, there's many. And so in this slide, there's a quick overview of some highlights by categories in the residential sector and the non-residential sector um, and a few major areas of, of what can be a policy framework or a package as was outlined in the introduction. So I want to talk a little bit about the regulatory side of things, our codes and standards. We recently released um, increasingly stringent uh, codes related to energy efficiency. We're in the process of developing codes for carbon operational and eventually embodied. And we also have some initiatives uh, to support that, uh, those, those kinds of regulatory actions uh, in Canada. We have regulations related to equipment, as well as uh, standards of performance for federal buildings, um, in addition to other public buildings. We have a number of initiatives that are in the, on the carrot side of the equation instead of the stick. So financial supports in the residential sector, the commercial sector. There's a long list, as you can see, anywhere from tax credits, funds, uh, and, and, uh, and other types of programs. I'll focus on a few uh, that are more recent, perhaps, in case people are interested. And lastly, there's a number of enabling measures, uh, anywhere from labeling, certification, benchmarking, um, workforce developments, all those types of initiatives that are absolutely critical in the energy transition in the building sector that we won't have time to go through, but I'm happy to, uh, to answer questions later on. So let's focus on the ones that I bolded here. I'll start with the regulatory side of things. In terms of codes, so for new construction, for new buildings in Canada, 
codes are adopted at the subnational level. So either a province or in some cases, uh, cities are the ones who adopt. What we do at the national level is we work with the community across the country to develop what we call model codes that can then be adopted in those jurisdictions. What happened in March 2022 is we published the delayed 2020 edition um, of the model codes, which are um, for new construction and for all types of buildings of different sizes. And they this, these ones currently focus on energy. What's unique about these codes is that they are a step code or a tiered code. So for large buildings, there are four tiers or four steps. And for residential or small buildings, there are five. And what they do is they provide essentially a signal to the market as to how to go even more stringent. And so a jurisdiction may adopt the first tier, the first step, or it may adopt the second, the third, and um, kind of have a roadmap of how they're going to be increasing that over time. So it, it helps um, show the way uh, for the market. And it also gives a bit of flexibility in a very decentralized country such, such as ours. These are complex uh, documents, of course, but uh, there's two usually different compliance paths, prescriptive, but also performance paths um, that, are, that rely a lot on, on modeling as well. So this is uh, a solution that we found in Canada to help uh, recognize the different needs uh, in our country. It's a very big country, different climate zones, different building practices, different political environments. And so these different tiers help people go and adjust um, where they want to go, but still uh, give a sense of, of where the future lies. So the higher tier is highly efficient. Uh, some folks would talk about net zero energy ready-ish. Um, we don't exactly use those terms, but roughly in those, in those areas. We're also developing a code for existing buildings. This is a code for alterations to existing buildings. So if Adopted, what that would mean is that in the case of a building owner that makes a renovation that triggers uh, of a certain magnitude, it would trigger requirements uh, similar to the ones for new construction. So this is currently under development at the moment, um, and it's expected to be released in the 2025 cycle in a couple of years. Now there's next steps on this uh, for codes. So the ones that we just published, which are focused on increasingly stringent energy efficiency levels, we did uh, just release last week uh, a fund, a $100 million fund to support those subnational jurisdictions and other stakeholders in all the, all the work that is required to adopt those codes, to comply with these codes, to build the infrastructure and the market readiness to support these codes. So we're calling this the Codes Acceleration Fund. Um, so this was just launched to help um, all these jurisdictions move as quickly as is possible in their, in their individual contexts. Meanwhile, we're also working uh, hard with our stakeholders to develop what we're calling a net zero emissions codes. And this is a code that will address greenhouse gas emissions. Um, the next iteration is 2025, and it will look at uh, sorry operational carbon. And we're also doing work to uh, integrate embodied carbon in these codes as well. So that's under development um, at the national level. Now, I'll talk a little bit later. There's some work at the subnational level that exceeds or that goes faster than the national level, but this is something we're trying to do to lift all boats um, in the country. I want to talk a little bit about public buildings. Um, so we have something called the Greening Government Strategy, which, as is the case in so many countries, is a set of policies or requirements related to either leased or owned buildings uh, in the public sphere. And the goal is to go faster than the commercial sector here. So uh, if you're curious about looking at, at it on our website, you'll see that it requires net zero carbon at federal buildings. Um, it, it puts a shadow price on carbon of $300 a ton. And it has a, quite, a few, uh, quite a few requirements here to ensure that the buildings that are either leased or owned uh, by the government are, are uh, Net zero, not net zero carbon, and and go towards uh, decarbonization. So, um, there's a lot of work in that direction. There's a requirement uh, already to have 100% clean electricity, uh, a building commissioning, and all you know, essentially the the best as much as possible in the context of building of public buildings to to really lead by example in the country. Now. 
incentives and financial supports, there's so many, and I, I can't uh, go through all of them. We do think that they're important, of course, to support the market as they eventually need to meet those more stringent regulations, such as codes. Um, we do have a flagship residential retrofit program called the Canada Greener Homes Program, which has both a grant and a loan component, as well as a recent uh, program that will be to um, encourage conversions from oil heating to heat pumps, especially for low and moderate income Canadians. It's a big, it's an important subset in the country. We have a Canada infrastructure bank uh, that has a billion, couple billion dollars uh, program for uh, retrofits in the commercial and public space. And it focuses heavily on um, using using loans and, and, uh, and private uh, loans as well combined uh, to, to foster retrofits. We have a program that's inspired by our colleagues in the Netherlands uh, called the Greener Neighborhoods Pilot Program, which is about to launch, I believe tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken, to support mass retrofits in the residential sector. Instead of doing one house at a time, we can do one street, one neighborhood. And we're also launching uh, a thing called our Deep Retrofit Accelerator Initiative, and that's to support those groups, those enablers, or those concierge services, those kinds of organizations that help and guide and aggregate uh, retrofit projects and building owners in, in the context of retrofits, uh, deep retrofits, which we know, of course, is a big hassle and is, is, a, big, uh, is a big barrier. There. Of course, there's a lot of incentives at the utility level, at the subnational level, at the city level. Um, it's, of course, a, a big, uh, big space. Lastly, just for a couple of minutes, I do want to mention, and I said I went very quickly of what we were doing at the national level in terms of our policy package. Canada is a very decentralized country. When it comes to buildings, uh, provinces, and cities have a lot of uh, jurisdiction. In terms of new construction, um, there's interesting stuff happening. Uh, if you look at the province of British Columbia, where Vancouver is located, um, they've had a, a, a tiered step code for a number of years that inspired the national code. Um, and they're working well ahead in that direction. They're also launching what's called the, the carbon pollution standard to integrate carbon uh, requirements in, in, new, in new construction. We're seeing that picked up. For instance, the city of Victoria is planning to have net zero carbon buildings by 2025, the city of Vancouver by 2030, and the city of Montreal uh, in Quebec also um, in a couple of years. So lots of leadership um, at the at the subnational level, and of course there's a whole lot more there. When it comes to existing buildings, the trends we're seeing, uh, there's two major trends I would say. The first one is using equipment regulations to help decarbonize heat, especially. The province of British Columbia is planning to require 100% efficiency for heating systems, which, uh, as you can imagine, rules out some uh, some fossil heating systems. And you'll see a number of cities, Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal, the three big cities, um, are either exploring or planning to adopt um, existing building performance standards, so essentially increasingly stringent standards um, for existing buildings, so that eventually goes to, to net zero, and that kind of charts a path to when you need to retrofit. So. As you can see, it's a combination of uh, a combination of carrots and sticks, as always, as well as a combination of national action, subnational actions, and uh, joint actions as well. Short time. My email address is here, and I'm happy to entertain any questions today or uh, online later on. Thank you.